The Major League Rugby Championship final was an absolute banger and massive congratulations to the New England Free Jacks for defending their title. I want to take a bit of a deeper look into this game and why it ended the way that it did. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any match stats or at least in-depth match stats to really see how this game played out. If anyone knows of any sites that give in-depth match stats for the MLR, please let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to go off of my notes. So let's get into it. The first thing to note is just how high quality this match actually was. I don't think this match would really have stood out against other tier 1 professional leagues. Both teams can be very proud of themselves, the intensity was there, the skills were there, I thought it was a great, great game of rugby. This was a very interesting match from a tactical perspective, because both teams had very different approaches. New England's primary concern was really to take the initiative and to be a bit more aggressive and attacking in nature, whereas Seattle wanted to control the game a little bit more. This focus on taking the initiative by New England was very apparent from the very beginning. They started off with a lot of intensity and a lot of aggression, both on attack and in defense. However, remember that rugby is a very intense sport, specifically on your fitness. So this early focus from New England on intensity and aggression did have a price towards the end of the game. We'll get into this a little bit later, but I felt particularly in the second half, New England started to fatigue a little bit more than Seattle. New England's attack was very threatening and very quick throughout this game. Their overall approach was to attack very, very flat and to focus on speed as much as possible. This allowed them to get a good amount of gain line success despite being smaller than their opponents. And this gain line success led to Seattle defending on the back foot a little bit more and it allowed New England to get a lot of space out wide. So if you look at this game and the way that New England attacked, you can see that they spread the ball wide a lot. And they were able to stretch Seattle's defense and put them under loads and loads of pressure. This led to New England taking the momentum of the game very early on and they were quite dominant in the territory and the possession stats by half time. This added pressure on Seattle's defense also forced them to give away a lot of penalties which I'll get to in a little bit. A big reason for this quick and threatening attack by New England was the fact that they had a lot of clean ruck ball throughout the game. This gave them great attacking platforms and support lines and it contributed a lot to this quick attack from New England. This opens up a little bit of a debate in terms of Seattle and their approach on defense. They chose not to compete heavily at the ruck and they chose rather to keep defenders on their feet and to prioritize connections. This is positive because it denied New England a lot of line breaks, but it was also negative because this also led to a lot of good and high quality rucks for New England on attack. In my opinion, I would have liked to see Seattle put a bit more pressure at the ruck to make it a bit more messy and slow and really allow them to set their defensive lines more strongly. This would also have likely given them a bit more initiative during the game because there were periods where New England just did all of the attacking all the time. Apart from New England's attack, which was very, very good, the main star of this game was probably New England's defense. They were exceptional. Unlike Seattle, New England tried really, really, really hard to get into the breakdown and to make it as messy as possible. This did two things primarily. The first is that it really blunted Seattle's attack. They couldn't get a lot of gain line success, particularly in that first half. And the second, and probably the most important factor in this game, was the fact that it allowed them to get a lot of crucial turnovers. Because New England played with such high intensity in the first half, it meant that their fitness started to lack a little bit, in my opinion, in the second half, and it allowed Seattle's attack to get a lot of gain line success and to make a lot of meters with each carry. This then consequently puts New England under lots of pressure, and Seattle actually came very close to scoring a lot of crucial tries. However, New England's work at the breakdown was vital for them. I must have counted at least three or four try saving turnovers. And if New England didn't manage to get them, then they would have likely lost the game. Despite the game ending in a nine point win for New England, I actually felt that the game was a lot closer than that. 
and that Seattle really started to take control of the game towards the end. But these crucial turnovers just denied Seattle to turn these opportunities into points. Now, despite losing the game, I think that Seattle can feel very proud of themselves with the way that they went about this game. They were very solid in the air for large parts during this game, uh, particularly their back three. They had a lot of clean balls that were taken, despite their blockers, which are the players that are retreating that are supposed to form a shield around the receiver, these players not being that accurate and them actually being under pressure, their back three managed to catch the ball cleanly a lot of times. And this did deny New England a lot of easy entry points into the game, so they can be very proud of that. Another area where I feel like Seattle might feel a little bit unlucky is at the scrum. I think that the scrum was actually really good. They put New England scrum under loads and loads of pressure. But unfortunately for them, the calls just didn't go their way, or at least it didn't go their way as much as they were expecting. The last aspect that I do want to talk about is Seattle's discipline, which was a little bit subpar on the day. They gave away more penalties than New England, and they also had that yellow card, which put them under a little bit more pressure. This game was a real arm wrestle of a match, and one thing that you'll particularly hear very often is that rugby is a game that is decided by the team who makes the least amount of mistakes. I think that if Seattle's discipline was a little bit better, then they would have had a real chance of winning this game. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and you'd like to see more game reviews and analyses, then please consider liking and subscribing. Cheers, guys.